Hello guys, and welcome to another replay analysis. And we got another Protoss versus Zerg today. This is, I honestly think Protoss versus Zerg, or Zerg versus Protoss, this matchup is by far the most commonly requested matchup for replay analysis, especially lately. I've, uh, yeah, this is uh, lots of PvZ. Lots of people confused about PvZ. Uh, and long story short, I think one of the reasons why people might be confused about this matchup is because of the power swing shifts that happen so often in this matchup, and sometimes the meta will change that, or the patches will change that. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, I don't have to get specific here. It's happened many times to many different units, but this matchup definitely has power swings like crazy. Uh, AoE for Protoss is insane, and Zerg is, it just gets destroyed by AoE. Vice versa, overwhelming destroys Protoss, and Zerg has the ability to do that. So these kinds of things cause major problems in this matchup. But, anyways, it's just interesting thought. I just felt like saying that. Let's go ahead and see this game specifically. What's going on? So, again, we got a diamond level game here. Uh, we're looking at it from the Protoss' perspective. Blood in the face. Blood in face. <coughs> yeah, we'll see what's going on. Okay. <laughs> So the fact that he said I'm Zerg already makes me think he's playing random, but... So if you would have made a pilot in a weird spot if he was random, I would uh, have been confused for a little while until you told me that, but... Yeah, it's fine. Your build, your build's fine, placement-wise. Against Zerg, it's good. So no need to worry about that. Oof, that's a big oof right there. Lots of time missed on your Nexus, building a probe. I go over this all the time. I'll kind of touch on it quickly, but long story short, every second that goes by that you don't make a probe means every probe after that is going to be further and further and further delayed, and each probe mines about a mineral per second. So if every probe now, let's say your first probe is delayed by 10 seconds because you just delayed building the probe. Every probe you build after that from this Nexus, which throughout this game, it could realistically be like another 20 probes out of this Nexus after this point, or like 30 more probes out of this Nexus after this point, if you weren't, if you didn't fuck up again, that is however many probes you're going to make times the amount of seconds you just missed on the first one, and that's how much money you just missed out on. And that also, that it could even be even more than that, because if you make more money as the game goes on, it means you have more money to work with, and you can make a Nexus faster, you can make other shit faster, pylons faster, another Nexus faster. So, it's huge. It adds up really fast how much money you miss if you, uh, delay your probes like that for too long and you definitely there was no reason why you had to do that like you had the money to do it you just didn't build it for a little while it was like eight seconds or something or ten seconds okay this looks pretty normal from zerg you did a gateway scout you see a hatchery halfway done you see a gas just starting you see a pool just starting this all looks pretty standard I would say right now already, you don't have to stay into his base. If, like you, you, if you want to, you can. If you, if you want to do this kind of shit where you mine his patches, be it really annoying. If you are gonna mine his Zerg's patches, just know this. The best way to do this is to mine close patches. Do not mine far patches. Because the best case scenario, best case scenario for you is, I mean, you're, you're always gonna just steal his minerals for a second. So, I don't think, I honestly, I'm not going to be surprised if your probe just mines the minerals and then walks home with minerals in its hand. I'm not going to be surprised if that happens. And if that does, what I'm about to say is not super relevant. But just so you know, and other players out there, just so you know, if you ever mine the minerals and then stop and then mine the minerals and then stop and do that repeatedly, you want to do close patches because you want to make the Zerg have its drones reallocate to far patches and leave three per patch on far patches. And if the Zerg is lazy, which some Zergs are, and they just leave the three on a far one, and they have only one on a close one. You can I cannot begin to describe to you how bad that is for Zerg. That fucking sucks for Zerg when they just... For their economy, and if they're like, eh, whatever. If they don't realize how important that is, that is so bad for Zerg. So the fact that you're mining a far patch, you're giving him a chance to where one of these drones, like for instance this drone right here, it might go reallocate to a close patch, and you might have just fixed his economy for him. Literally, that's... Uh, well, not quite. He still might. He went from one far patch to another. It tried to go to the close one, though. But, I mean, you mine from it. So, again, it's not super relevant. Because, I mean, all you did was stole five minerals and ran away, which is fine. 
But uh, yeah, just keep that in mind. If you want to actually abuse the mineral line, that's what you that's what the goal is. You want to fuck over their close patches and oversaturate their far patches. Okay, so your build is uh, your build's a little messed up too, I would say, for what you're doing behind this. So you chrono boosted. Like we'll go back and look exactly at your build right now, like all of it. Made a probe. Your, pro your first probe goes to build the pylon. You revalue the middle line. Good shit. You make the pylon. You wait for a little while before you make another probe. That was the long... I know you made a gateway there, but like I said before, you could have afforded it. I just want to make this very apparent here. Like We'll, we'll do an exact second count, because I want you to know. This is really important. So your pylon's about to be finished. And as it finishes, look at your minerals. You already have 230. As the probe just popped out of your base, and it popped out of your base at like 39 seconds. 40 seconds. We'll pause it right when it pops out. It pops out at 40 seconds. So at 40 seconds, you have enough money to build a probe and also build a gate. And let's see how long it takes for your probe to start again. So you made the gateway right now, and you probably just sent your probe to go scout his base. I guarantee you probably just did a shift command in his base. Or no, you didn't. I thought you would have done that, which is why it took you so long to do this. Because I, I was thinking you were probably going to like shift command it onto the middle line and shit like that, which is why you waited to build a probe. Definitely should have started a probe. That's already seven... Seven, it was seven seconds late. You start. You could have made it at 40, and it took you to 47 to make it. So, bit of a blunder there. And then start the gas as soon as you can as well. A little bit of a late gas. And a little, so, your chrono, your probe, and your second or your first gas, all those are a little late. Chrono, gas, probe. These three things, after you made the gateway, were all a little bit late. These kinds of things do fuck you over a little bit. We'll touch back on these in the future of the game. But obviously, late probes means late minerals, late gas means late tech, and here's one thing why this fucks you over. You go core before nexus, and the core before nexus makes no sense if you have delay your gas. So, if you're delaying gas and going core first, your build is super inoptimal. It's not great. It doesn't pair well to delay your gas, and also, it doesn't really make sense at all to delay your gas, I'll just throw that out there. But if you go core first, <coughs> um, that really is priority for uh, like a pressure build, something like that, something like something aggressive, which also would probably insinuate the fact that you should probably also be saving your chronos for whatever pressure you're going to go for. Uh, so yeah, I would just let you know, make sure you know this, that you should be going Nexus for a core, especially if it's hatchery first for Zergs. So super late Nexus, and th there's no reason to have it either. And you're prioritizing chronos on your probes. Bef so also, do not chrono boost a second time. So your build's a little fucked up overall, like in, mul in multiple ways. You also do not want to chrono boost a second time on your Nexus until after your second pylon is done. And that when the second pylon finishes, that's when you do a second chrono on probes. Because now what's going to happen is you're, you're going to supply block, and you're going to waste... Like, you're going to build probe... A probe faster, but then just to be supply blocks for a while and build no probes. And the only way to fix this now is to build another pylon again before you build a nexus, which is going to mean you have a very delayed nexus. Or you just build a nexus like you're supposed to, and you're going to have a, a supply block for a while. And you're going for the nexus first, so you're going to be supply block for a while. And now you're just not building probes again. So, you, I mean, that's exactly what's going to happen. You just can't build probes again. So your probe finishes at 153. And there's still three seconds of chrono boost left here. So it's three seconds of wasted chrono, and 153 is now the start of no probing for a while. You start another probe at 2 we'll say 202 because it's basically a second right now. So that's nine seconds, three of which were chrono boosted, wasted, and now it's gonna be cr it's gonna be stuck again because you started a probe in the pilot at the same time, and now you are supply blocked. So now, from 214 until. Like 217, you're going to be supply blocked. And you still haven't started a probe, even though now you're not supply blocked anymore. And you started a probe at 220. So that's another, like, what was that, six seconds? Did I, I can't remember the first number I said. Was it 214? 
Point is, more seconds. That's a, a lot. So far, up to 23 probes, you have already missed on oh, this Nexus in terms of production. I would say it's like two to three probes worth of production. And you've already burned another Chrono Boost. So you should have, I would say, three to four now. Because you should have another Chrono Boost now being active on your on your Nexus. And you should also have a Chrono Boost being active on your Stalker. So, first Chrono Boost activates after the first pylon. Second Chrono Boost activates after the second pylon. And you pair a Chrono Boost on your Nexus and your Gate at the same time. Because by the time the second pylon is done, you'll have access to have had three Chrono Boosts at that point. So, one pylon, two with the second pylon. Chrono, Chrono, second pylon, one Chrono, Nexus, first pylon. If you just fix that... Your build's already gonna be way more efficient. You're already you're already behind where you should be, for just the fact that your build order is really awkward. So it should be pylon, gate, gas, nexus, core, gas pylon. That should be your build order, and the chrono boost allocation like I just said. And if you can do that, your build is great. And it's okay. I would say it's okay if you cut probes for just a sec, like just a really quick moment of time, at 20 supply. When you start your Nexus, because that's how it sh that should line up that way. If you're constantly making probes, when you're at 20 supply, that's when you'll have 400 minerals ready to make a Nexus. So you can stop making another probe as you start making the Nexus just for a second to save for the core and then go back to making probes again. And in total, this will mean you, will you might not make probes for all of like six seconds, which is okay if you do it in this way, because it means a faster Nexus and a faster core, which is going to help you. Uh, and then it'll be, it's, it's, it lines up perfectly so that you, you don't supply block as well. Because if you go gas before pylon, you'll be hitting 23 out of 23 uh, uh, with a probe in production as your pylon finishes. <clears throat> so you won't block at all. Like, you'll always have a probe being built after that. And you can see you're chronoing the gate, which is what you should do. But now your nexus... And your nexus is not doing anything again. This is fucking rough. This is rough. 233 is when it starts. This is not good. Th this is major problem. Major problems. Major problems. And already from your gameplay, if I had to guess, okay? I'm, I'm just, because I don't, I didn't see if you said it earlier. But if I had to guess, I would say Diamond 3. Because this kind of shit is not allowed. And like, if you're going to get, like, upper diamond to, like, masters, you can't be doing that kind of shit. Like, you will die every time if you do this kind of stuff. But this kind of stuff happens a lot to people in plat. Uh, and low diamond, so I would already assume D3. Yeah, D3. Yeah, okay. That's exa this is exactly why you're D3. It's shit like that. You have to fix your your production uptime. You cannot let it go idle. If you let that shit go idle repeatedly, that's rough. That was I don't even remember how many seconds that was. I'm gonna just guess like we can back it up and look at it, but I would guess like 10, 15 seconds right there again. So like in the first 30 seconds of the game, you've already missed. Or sorry, in the first three minutes of the game, you've already missed like 30 seconds of probe time. That's fucking crazy. That's a lot of wasted probe time. Like 40 seconds. Glory. That is your biggest problem so far. By far. Now, if you're going to go for no sentry, high, and you're, if you're not going to go for a sentry or a... Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Basically, okay. Sentry is good. But I'll just, I'll just let me just say it like this. I don't want to. I don't want to make it weird with the units. If you're gonna go for a natural and you're gonna make probes, you're gonna you're gonna play kind of blind, kind of blind like you are, which is okay. I'm not saying it's the worst thing in the world to play a little bit blind. I have hiccups again. Fuck. If you're gonna play a little bit blind, just make a shield battery. You need a shield battery, and I would say a great time, a great time to make one. Is right around the time when you started your tech. Like right around three minutes would be a great time to make a shield battery. And the reason why that's a great time to make it is be because you saw this Zerg playing standard. Like this was a standard opener. And if you see a standard opener from Zerg and you make a battery around three minutes, what will happen is, is your battery will be finished just in time, just before a Ling Bane or a Ling Roach or something really all in can hit you from, from Zerg. Speed finishes right after three minutes for Zerg, so. And then if they pair that with Roaches or Banes or whatever, there you go. Now you have a battery that can help you not die. <gasps> and a battery is super important. Just just one battery as well. You don't need to make multiple. Just one is important because it allows you to uh, be able to overcharge it. 
which is huge. Huge, 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 huge. Right, overcharged battery is OP as fuck for not dying to all ends. And right now, I totally think you could die to an all in because of how blind you play. <clears throat> okay, you're making voids. Not super against it. it we'll, we'll see how you play it out from here. Voids. Sorry, I tried to like fix my hiccups right there, but yeah, it didn't work. Uh, I, did, I did it really fast though. Um, okay, anyways, uh, fuck my hiccups, who cares? I'll just have them the whole time. It's okay. Uh, <clears throat> so you're making it, you're going Sky Toss. And if you go Sky Toss, that's okay. I mean, this is, this is a way you can play against Zerg, but you're doing it out of a weird order now. Here's what I would say. <clears throat> Your third base is way too fucking late. I don't mind that you made a couple of adepts. I don't like that you let them just die, though. Let's go back and talk about your adepts really, really fast. So your adepts get in here. You poke some stuff. You run there. You cancel the shades because Zerg's over there. You're pretty deep on creep. You run behind the middle line. <clears throat> You let them commit, they get killed. Not great. Not great. And here's why that's not great. What did you What did you accomplish right there? You killed four drones. And I think you killed pretty much all of them, if not most of them, before you even committed to the shade over here. So, what I think you should do, you killed, yeah, you killed two of them before you committed into his main base. What you should do is this first attack, I'm not gonna say it was the worst, I like that you ran opposite of where your shades go, and you canceled them. That was fine. Up to this point, you were fine. The fact that you ran into the middle line was fine. I think this is all great. However, what I think what I think you should have done is if you shade into his main base, like like oh, deeper into his base again, you should have the intention of getting out of his base, like killing what's here now and then running away, or even better for now because you're not reinforcing this. I would say shade out of his base, go into his middle line and shade like down to here. And here's why. This is something a lot of people do not under understand about StarCraft. Every I, everyone, but here's the thing. Everyone experiences this in StarCraft. You all experience this, I guarantee it. But nobody knows how to abuse it. It's super simple, but nobody does it. If you just kept these units alive, okay? You shaded down to here and you went out of his vision out of fog of war you're just gone and, and you're out of his vision you put a lot of in in this um you make him in indecisive and you put a lot of uh what the fuck word am i trying to say here you put like indirect pressure on him there you go that's what i kind of what i want to say <gasps> you put indirect pressure on him because if he has if you show him you have units and he does not kill your units and he now sees you leave his base. You're still out there. You could come right back. It makes your opponent have a lot more problem. Oh, Jesus. Your opponent has a lot more problems in general about how they're going to follow their buildup. It's, you know, like if the units don't die and it's like, well, I, I could get attacked again. If you just make fucking drones now as the Zerg player, like, I don't care. Drones. Like you have to, you have to really ride that line to be like, am I gonna be okay or am I not gonna be okay? That's a thing. So if you don't let your shade, your adepts die, that's a big fucking deal because your adepts honestly accomplish like nothing at this point, anyways. <laughs> you basically just throw them in the trash can at this point. You're like, ah, go die. That's essentially what is about to happen right now. But if you keep them alive, the Zerg doesn't know if you're gonna attack him again, and that indecisiveness out of Zerg is already really good because if the Zerg goes shit, <gasps> like Adepts might come back, I'm gonna make another eight links, fuck it. Well, that's like four drones that you just killed, essentially essentially right there. Who gives a shit if he makes eight links? You don't care. But that's great for you. If he's trying to make drones, 
That's wonderful for you because you put indirect pressure on him. You make him feel like he didn't kill your army, and you made you killed some of his units and you got out of his base. You could come right back. So it's not a guarantee you're gonna make Zerg make more shit, but it's a possibility and it's worth way more than just throwing them away. It's worth way more than throwing them away. Because if you do throw them away, you know what that does to Zerg? It makes him go, wow. Protoss just throw units away. I can now make as many drones as I want. You give him the ability to do that. So don't give him the ability to do that. So, yeah. Don't just throw your units away. Like that. I, this was a, not a great adept attack. Because you just threw them away. I want you to know that. That's very important. Because if you're going Sky Toss, the early game setup is huge. That was now what's they're gonna do? Let's see like he's just gonna go fucking drone crazy. Say, oh cool! Adept's just suicided. Let's make drones. Not great for you. If you if your adepts went out of his base, he might actually have made more lings because he's paranoid. Now on your base, so that that's what you should have done with your attack. Hundred percent. To slow him down. And then your adepts could have easily come right back and helped defend your third base. Which even I'll just say this too. I'll say this as well. <clears throat> even if you didn't attack him at all taking your third faster and having those adepts that just died at your third to guard it as it gets set up would have been better than what you just did as well so if you're like I've, I'm not really good at multitasking right now vibe I don't want to do that that's okay use those adepts to sit at your base defensively then so in case he does a mass ling flood on your base those adepts plus your voids will buy your base more time and do more DPS to kill the lings. You'll have a better chance to not lose your base. Okay. So that's huge. Your third base already is like over a minute too late. You should be taking your... Like, let me just show you when you should be taking your third base. So, you want to go Sky Toss. Your goal is to go Sky, sky Toss. And you're making a fleet beacon. This might be for mass void rays. It might be for car carriers and mothership and void ray opener. All of these things. But you know what is not need what is not needed right now? A lot of gas. These gases are way too fucking early. What you should do is you should take gases in your main. That's fine. I like it. Pretty standard. But you made one Stargate, and you're making voids one at a time out of said Stargate. You are pairing that with mineral cost costing things like expansions, pylons, probes, adepts. Even though adepts cost 25 gas a piece, that is almost no gas. It's very cheap on the gas. It's very mineral heavy is my point. So the fact that you, you don't take a third like right now is, uh, you know, you're kind of missing the beat a little bit. But you could totally get ready to set up a third right about now. Right about four minutes. But instead, you start ripping off your mineral line to start putting on gas here. So you have this crazy, crazy gas investment. And now watch your gas. What do you do with this gas? Let's, let's see. Let's see what you do with this gas. What is happening with our gas here? What is so important? And you're not, macro you're not macroing at all either while you attack with these adepts. So I would say don't attack with adepts. Do not attack with the depths. You're fucking your, yourself over so badly by doing this. You make a fleet beacon, you make another stargate, and you start a third base. Right? So, your third base was started around 5.30. Again, that's about 90 seconds after it should have been started. Your third base could have been done by now, and it could have already had a fully saturated mineral line by now. Because look at this gas again, okay? Let's let's really do the math here. If you deleted this gas that you've mined here, this is about uh, three almost uh, three hundred gas that you've mined on each gas, okay? That's about three hundred gas you mined on each one. Uh, Per gas, so that's 600 in total. Okay. 600 gas in total that you've mined out of these two gases. Now, what does that accomplish for you? A, fusion, or a fleet beacon, not a fusion core, a fleet beacon costs 200 gas. So, 
if you if we just deleted your 600 gas out of your bank right now, you'd be at negative 50. But if we refunded you the fleet beacon cost, you'd be back up to plus 150, right? Because that, that's, you know, you'd be negative 50 back up to positive 150 because this is 200 value. If we gave you this again, this is worth 150. So uh, now you'd be at positive 300. Okay. And the point I'm trying to make here is you could have still made void rays out of your one stargate the entire time and it wouldn't have changed off of the fact that you had two gases. So you could have easily... And you haven't even done anything with your second stargate yet. You haven't even done anything with your fleet beacon yet. You could have easily still had just as many voids as you have right now. But the trade-off would be instead of, instead of having this right now that you can't even afford properly, you would have a fully saturated mineral line right now on your third base. And when your third base is fully saturated, do you know what you could do then? Your, your minerals are going to be a lot more, a lot higher in value. You could pair that with more mineral costing thi things like shield batteries, cannons, another expansion, starting your gases. All of these things cost minerals, no gas. And then once you have three bases fully saturated, you could then add more probes to take gas, 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 gas. And now you go from two gas to six gas. And then you could add on, like right now, you could be adding on your fleet beacon and like three more stargates. With like four voids already off of one stargate. And your economy would be so much bigger than it, than it is. You could already have like, you know, like 55, 60 probes right now as well, just like the Zerg does. And drones. And you, you would just have so much more value. You'd have so much more income. Overall, your income is terrible right now compared to what it could be. So, like, if we look at this, watch, watch this too. Watch this. This is a big one too. Let's write down exactly when the, the Stargate and the Sleep Beacon finishes. And it was also kind of late, by the way, because you you macroed poorly while you were harassing with the depths. Like, you waited until you had like a thousand gas or so, and like a thousand, like twelve hundred minerals or something. <gasps> but look, you're you're. They, we'll just say they finish at six oh eight. Your your Sleep Beacon finished like six oh five, and your your Stargate finished at six oh eight. How long does it go until you actually use it? 608. So you start actually making a void ray out of it at 619. Not that bad. Uh, 11 seconds it went by. Uh, but again, is this like one void ray worth the mineral line at your third? I don't think so. And also you have no cannons. You can't even afford cannons. And that's a big deal. If your opponent were to all in you... If your opponent all into you and you have literally no cannons, you will die. There's how do you expect to keep your probes alive? It's never never gonna work. So Yeah, your build order is just out of order. Too much gas priority, too much neglecting of probing as well at times. Like again right now. Like I just saw as I said that and you're doing it again right now. No current boosting is either. And now you're going carrier. I'm just gonna throw it out there and say it like this, okay? Okay. You should not be making voids until you're on two bases. And this should be done off of one Stargate as you take a third base. You should stay on one Stargate making voids until you start a fourth base. Because the additions of what you add on for your th to set up your third and your fourth <gasps> is you add on Another nexus. You add on more pil more pylons. You add on more probes. You add on uh, cannon. Once you have your third base saturated you, and you start your fourth, you start adding on cannons. You start adding on batteries. These are so many mineral expenses that you need to spend your money on first while you make voids one by one by one by one by one by one. And then once you have uh, your fourth base set up, and you're like starting to probe your fourth base, then you explode your fucking stargate count to, from like one to five or one to four. Like you just make a lot of stargates at once and then you add on the fleet beacon. Like for the fact, for instance, if you're making a fleet beacon while you're on just voids, just know that if you do that, the amount of damage you need to get done goes up really high 
And it means your your void rays need to be very fucking active the whole time because if you're like, no, I'm just gonna I'm gonna rush the void ray speed upgrade. Well, they need to be very very active then, because if you get the void ray speed upgrade and you do nothing with them, and, in, 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 and instead all you do is you slow down your own economy. Like we're at almost eight minutes and your third base is pretty pathetic. That's four probes in the middle line. That could have been done at like five minutes, like five thirty, five thirty. Or not five minutes exactly, but like more like 5.30, 5.45. You could have had a very nicely saturated mineral line. <gasps> and we're eight minutes almost, and you still have a horrible third mineral line. This is really, really slow economy. And what have your voids really done? What are they doing right now? You killed a couple... You killed an overlord. You've killed 700 minerals of value here, and some of that was done by your adepts as well. So this is not worth what they've cost so far for you. And what do they do over here? What do they do over here? Chilling around. You poke in, kill a creep tumor. You killed, honestly, like two units there. Maybe like two zerglings. I don't even think a drone died. And you ran away. Not worth the value. You killed one more zergling there. This is not worth it. The reason why you're so far behind in supply right now is because your build is inefficient as fuck and you're not capitalizing on the damage you needed to to have done with how much gas you invested into it and how fast you did it. Like, you should be at 9 minutes going defensive, defensive sky toss. Oh, I'm cramping right now. Oh my god. You should probably be at like 140 supply. 150. I don't know. More than you have. Definitely more than you have. Fuck, the Zerg player is not macroing the best either. Because he's at 155 at 9 minutes. You might even be able to... At like 9 minutes, honestly, you could be probably like at 160, 170 supply at this time with Sky Toss. Dead serious. So you're pacing very slow. And again, it all comes down to what I talked about. If you just fix the fact that you take a fourth base... Or rather, sorry, you take a third base at like four, at like four minutes... You don't take gases at all at your natural or third until they're fully saturated on the mineral lines. And then <coughs> and then when you take a fourth base, that's around the time when you take your gases is when you also take your fourth. You then start throwing down all of your stargates. You throw down your fleet beacon. You start throwing down all of your cannon battery everywhere you need to do it. You're going to have so much money at that point because your income is going to be super high. You're going to have like 3,000... 2,500, 3,000 income at that point, it's going to be a lot of money to be able to spend. You're going to feel like overwhelmed to be able to spend, spend it. You're going to be like, wow, I have so much income. I need to make a lot of stuff right now. Do it. That's fine. And then you start going into carriers then. Later. You start going carriers way too early. And also, you made gateways way too early too in a robo. Your robo is okay. First time RT's player. Started SC2 with your B2GM series two weeks ago. Now I'm Platzerg. TYVM. Yo, Fish, thank you so much for the 20, man. Much appreciated. Thank you, and I'm glad you like the B2GM series. Thank you, man. Hell yeah, much love. And welcome to the live broadcast. And congrats on Platinum. Thank you, dude. But I don't mind your robo timing right now. Like, around the time when you take your fourth base. And you, you like right early when you take the fleet beacon. If you take a robo as well around then, I'm okay with that because it's for the purpose of observers, right? Uh, and around then too, I wouldn't mind if you then took a Twilight Council. Like you rushed Archon Tech way too fast as well. This is way too fast on Archon. Archon Get Tech. a carbonated drink. Get uh, rid of those hiccups. Thank you guys for the bits. Uh, don't worry about the hiccups. It's okay. It's not going to work. I promise. Uh, it's just a, a waste of time. So, you rushed Archon Tech way too fast. Way too fucking fast. This is gas heavy. You should be making Archon Tech after you already start making carriers. The fact that you have... Well, you have a couple carriers now, but... It's just too... Like, your supply looks like shit, is what I'm trying to say here. The fact that you have four carriers and you're still only 100 supply as well is really fucking sad. You should have, like, 90 probes right now, or, like, 80 probes right now. More like 80 probes. Uh... With, so, if you, like, what I mean is, if you had four carriers, your supply should already be, like, 135 to 140. Uh, now. Now, okay? Now. When you make your fleet beacon, that's when you make your robo. That's when you make your twilight council. Or your templar archives. Or, Jesus Christ, I said it right the first time. Your twilight council. Twilight council, robo, fleet beacon. All of these happen around the same time. 
because you're going to make carriers and observers. Then, when you're like 150 supply or so, you can make a Temple Archives. When you have, when you, when you no longer have to make cannon battery, and you're done doing that, and now your money starts, your minerals are going up again. That is when you make your Templar archi Archives, and that is when you also pair that with more gateways, because that is going to pair we well with adding on the ability to go into charge lots if you want to later on, which will probably happen. Happen, and also you can make a round of Templar for Storm and Archon. At the very least, just Archon. So your shit's super out of order. If you fix the things we just said, in the ways I just said it, your build's gonna flow a thousand times better. Your your build is very far behind where it should be at this point in the game because of the order of how you're doing things. You're not really... You, you, you gotta think... You gotta, to make an efficient build, you gotta think about what am I gonna focus on mining and what am I gonna focus on building for the next part of the game. And if, if your answer to that right, right away at the start of the game is, I'm gonna do everything right away. That's a bad build. Because you can't do everything right away. What that means then, if you're like, I'm going to just do everything. I'm going to make cannons. I'm going to make batteries. I'm going to make really fast carriers. What that means is, is you're giving yourself a very low mineral income to mine gas really fast, to get carriers fast, which is going to mean that you make, you can't really afford to make cannon battery and exp expansions properly, which is going to mean your supply is going to be really garbage for a long time. So if, you're, if your plan is to expand and then go sky toss, that's what it should be. Focus on minerals first and then explode your gas once you have expansions. Don't focus on gas and then take slow expansions because all that does is makes you max out like four minutes after you could have done it in the first place. Like I guarantee on this game the way you're pacing it, you're not going to max until like 14 minutes. Which is super fucking slow. You should be maxing by like before 10 minutes with this kind of a build or like right around 10 minutes. Roughly around 10 minutes. Like it's way better. Uh, and then yeah, that's pretty much how it should go. <coughs> and also, you have no cannon battery at your natural. That's super risky. You should be having with a build like then you're starting it now, which is good, or at least a battery. But what you should have is you, you should have cannon battery at every front base and like one cannon and one battery in your main base. I wouldn't say you need the cannon battery in your main base yet with how you've done things so far, because the idea is is you want to put a cannon and a battery in your mineral line at your main base as soon as you're ready to move out. So in case he doesn't run by, you have something to like buy time for you to deal with to make like a zealot warp in or something like that. Okay, so you're flying voids around his base again. Now, at this point, when you're, like, getting higher supply, you want to start getting rid of shitty supply. Also, the fact that you made Archons this fast is incorrect as hell, too. This is why I really wanted to stress the point of the fact that your Temple Archives is too early. What you really want to have happen, this is how it should go. You make Voids early, and you make Adepts early, and you make one Stalker early. I'm okay with that. It's so that you can actually take your bases before you have Static D. That makes sense. As soon as you have Static D, you can start harassing more more realistically with your void rays up until that point if you want to poke like with one void ray to kill overlords that's okay that's okay that's fine the, the majority of your voids should stay defensive in case you get attacked because you don't have cannons yet and you're playing a greedy ass opener that's what you should be doing with this kind of a play style <clears throat> but <clears throat> jesus Whew, sorry guys i know it's probably hard to hear me what i'm saying but i, I can't help it um <sighs> So, your void should be defensive mostly, okay? Like, one void could go kill overlords until you have cannons. Once you have cannons, that's around the time when you're taking a fleet beacon, and then you get void race speed, and that's when you can go attack with your voids. That's fine. That's okay. Great. Good shit. Then you're making carriers. You should be making carriers until you literally max out. Once you max out, you... With, your, with carriers, you throw away everything that sucks ass. Throw away your voids. Throw away your adepts. Throw away your stalker. You can re you, once you get close to maxing out, and once you've replaced these units, you can replace them with like ar archons. You can replace it with a mothership. You can make these other things that are gonna fill in the rest. But you should be just cranking out carriers only for now. The fact that you made archons before you maxed out is not good at all. And here's why. If I had to ask you, what are archons good against? 
They're good against Zerg overall, but they're good because they can AoE shit. <gasps> and what can they AoE? Realistically? Against Zerg? It's two types of things. Zerglings? And air units. Now, if he has air units, and he goes for, like, let's say, Mutalisk. You don't want Archons because they're not going to be able to defend your base properly because they're super slow. And Mutas are going to get around your base really fast and fuck your base over. So at least if you had more carriers, you could be like, oh, I have a lot of cannons and batteries here. I have a lot of cannon battery here. I'm good to go. I could leave my carrier, like, right here. Or whatever. Or maybe I leave, like, three carriers over here and the rest of my carriers could stay here while I set up cannon battery. Because he went Mutas. And you'd be fine. More carriers means easier time to defend yourself. Now, if you went Corruptors really fast, Archons would be good against Corruptor. Yeah, that'd be, that's very true. Archons are The reason why you make Archons is literally for the corrup Corruptor. But if you also have Carriers sitting over the top of Cannon Battery and he's going Corruptor, you're still going to be okay. Because Battery with an Overcharge is going to help a lot at mitigating Corruptor damage. And uh, the Cannons themselves will help just DPS the Corruptors down as well. They hit pretty fucking hard. So... You're not, you shouldn't be too worried about, oh, Corruptors are going to kill me right now. You shouldn't be really worried about that yet. And if, here's the thing. If it was, if you did see Corruptors with, like, your Void Ray Scout, and you're like, oh, shit, this Zerg's rushing mass Corruptors, I would then not be like, why'd you make Archons so fast? I'd then be like, oh, well, if you know it's Corruptors, okay, yeah, sure, make Archons. A little earlier than normal. It makes sense. That's okay, then. But that is why you make them, is for the Corruptors. That is why you make them. If you make them just because, like, let's say the Zerg is going Ling Bane. Let's say he's going Roach Ravager. Let's say he's going fucking Hydra Timing. Let's say he's going Hydra Queen. All that's going to happen is your Archons are going to walk forward and they're going to fucking die. Like, they'd be good against Ling Bane. Sure, I just said they were good against Lings. They would be good against Ling Bane. But if the Zerg is going Ling Bane and you have Cannon Battery Carrier, Ling Bane is irrelevant. Who fucking cares if it's Ling Bane? You're just like, oh, hi, Ling Bane. Bye, Ling Bane. It doesn't matter. <gasps> but... Bigger ones that do matter is if he was going like Hydra, Hydra Queen. All that, that's going to happen is your Archons are going to walk forward and they're going to just pop really fast to Hydra DPS. <laughs> they're going to die. And then the fact that you made Archons means you have less gas to make Carrier. Because they're not free. These are fucking expensive. They're more expensive than a Carrier on gas per Archon. They're 50 gas more expensive than a Carrier per Archon. So if you have less Carriers and more Archon and you fight against Mass Hydra... You have less carriers to be able to have enough interceptors to overwhelm the Hydra, which increases the chances that Zerg is going to pop all your interceptors off, and then your carriers are going to be just dead weight. So don't fucking make Archons at this stage of the game. It's really bad. Make them when you're ready to push and you're worried about, well, if I push, now he might have Corruptor. That's why you make them is for Corruptor. Not anything else. Nothing else. Like, they're good against everything to a degree. But look, here's his Hydras, exactly. So you're out, you're, look what just happened. Look what just happened. Your Archons just fucking insta-died. Your Archons literally just insta-die right here. This is exactly why you don't want to make them this early. Your Archons literally just fucking insta-die in this fight. And now your carriers show up, he runs away, and he just makes more supply. You need more carrier. Faster. And now, if you're making Templar now, and he's got Mass Hydras, it would make more sense now if you let them stay Templar to Storm. But the fact that you don't even have Storm being started, I imagine you're going for straight up just Archons. And again, I don't mind if you add in Archons to your composition, but it should be when you're like maxed and you get rid of the shitty supply. <coughs> and then getting rid of shitty supply refreshes it now into Archon. The point is, if you were maxed out on carriers... That amount of carriers is going to be like 15 carriers or like 14 carriers. It's going to be double digit, deep into double digits, like 15, 16, whatever, something around there. It's not going to be like 11 or 10. It's going to be enough carriers to overwhelm Hydras if he goes mass Hydras. So even if you then have like three, four Archons, whatever, who gives a fuck? You have enough, you have enough carriers then to overwhelm him. But if you prioritize Archons, you're going to die. Because you're going to have half the carrier count that you want. This is a horrible carrier count. Eight carriers is not intimidating. Nine is not intimidating. It's not good. You need more. I'm glad you let those zealots die. I hope you make carriers to replace. Because it's definitely what you need. Also, you're not doing upgrades nearly enough. You don't have... Uh, where's your forge? 
your your forge upgrade is not bad. Level two shields is right now is not bad. Uh, j wait, just kidding. Sorry, I thought that was level two weapons, not level three. I thought your carriers only had level one weapons by now. Your upgrades aren't that bad. I take it back. They're not that bad. But definitely make sure you, you prioritize that. These need to be constantly constantly being prioritized. And if you don't fix this soon, that's a big that's a blunder. So you make more Archons. Yeah, this is not good again. If he pushes you again with Hydras right now, you could die. 9 Carrier versus 49 Hydra is kind of scary for Carrier. And the, Zer the Zerg is kind of taking his sweet-ass time right now. And now he's still taking his sweet-ass time. He's pushing this base now over here. 9 Carrier versus 49. So it's still 9 Carrier versus 49 Hydra. What's going to happen right now is your interceptors are going to bleed out against his army. If this Zerg is micros horribly and he just walks into you, you might win the fight. But if he just A moves you and stands there, you will lose the fight because your interceptors will bleed out. You don't have enough. 12 is getting a little bit more respectable. And he just he kills the base and runs away. That also works. But now he's giving you time to get more carriers. So now you're, you're in chance... Every time you get more carries, your chance of winning goes up. 12 is a bit better. It's still not great. It should be like 15, 16. 14 is even minimum, like on the low end. It should be like, honestly, like 16 is like healthy. 12 is like, you know, you're scraping by. It's like you're holding on to a, like, let's say you're holding yourself up on a ledge with like one hand. And you can use your whole hand to do it. 12 carries is like using three fingers. Anything below 10... Anything below 10 in single digits is like trying to use just your index finger. Oh, yeah, I'll be fine. Well, we're good. 16 is like using your whole fucking grip of your hand. Like it's much stronger. And now you have a mothership, which is great. I'm glad that you let the carriers die. I'm glad that you're letting the adepts die. This is, you're correct. Let them fucking die. Replace with better units. Let your stalker die as well, honestly, wherever that is. It's in your army. It, whatever. It's two supply. If you leave, if you keep it, it's not the end of the world. You should definitely let it die, though. And you're pushing with, with 12 carrier. Do you have, what do you have in production? Nothing. Uh, so, 12 carrier, if you're going to mix in Templar, so you actually are mixing in Templar, 12 carrier, or like 13 carrier, 14 carrier, like a little bit lower on the carrier count is okay if you have AoE as a substitute. If you were going to go for pure Archon carrier only, it should be like 16 carrier. But if you go for Templar as well, it's okay to have a little bit less. And I would say still 12 is maybe a little bit on the low end. But you could, have, like honestly, if you got rid of the Stalker, if you got rid of that Stalker, you could have 14 carriers. Like, get rid of that soccer, get rid of, like, one probe. You could have 14 carriers. Okay, let's watch how you micro this. And this is when AoE is very good. The second Zerg engages you, this is how your sequence of micro should be. <laughs> one... T click ground like right in front of where you're gonna fight one T click what does that do one selects your army mothership would be a priority T is time warp clicking the ground cast the ability and you put time warp all over his army it makes the engagement really hard for Zerg then quickly go over to t to two and go T click T click T click T click which is psionic psionic storm and you're just going to storm on clumps of his army. That's it. That's all it is. That's literally all you do. One T-click, two T-click, 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 T-click. You don't mothership at all. You just let it... Oh, you do eventually do it. Also, you fucked that up too. Uh, I want you to know this too. I, I That was a horrible time warp. It didn't even hit like any of the corruptors almost. Uh, make sure when you cast abilities on an army... A lot of people don't realize this, but it's really bad. I've talked about this many times, but I'll, I'll, you know, I want to say this again because it's very important because you just kind of made the same mistake that a lot of people do. When you cast a spell on an air unit, do not fucking cast it on the air unit. 
And so we, some of you right now be like, might be like, wait, what? What does that even mean? The graphic of the air unit is not actually how spells work in this game. Do you know why? Because this game is based off of a ground grid. It's not based off of an air grid. These units are not actually right here. They're actually right there. Do you see the circles on the ground? Actually, some of these are your interceptors. They're really right here, though. But the point is, is they're really like the corruptors are realistically like right here. The circle goes down. That's why these are lines with circles that represent every air unit. Do you see these circles that come off the units? Every air unit has it. Every single air unit has it. This carrier is actually right there. <gasps> that carrier that I'm clicking on right now, that is actually right there. Now, obviously, its hitbox is large, so it's bigger than just that little circle. But that, that right there, this circle is the center of the carrier, not right there. That is not the that is not the center of the carrier. The reason why this works like this is because you play StarCraft Two from like a forty five degree angle in the sky. Okay, you play it from like an angle, so you're not playing directly above the units. So if you cast directly on the units, it does not go directly onto the units. If I if I were to cast a spell on this corruptor right here, or we'll we'll pick an easier unit. We'll, we'll just do the carrier because this is kind of cluttered. If I cast a spell on the carrier right there. Casting a spell right there on the circle, if I go directly above it, it would go directly into the carrier. That would be perfect. That's how spells work in this game. <gasps> but if I cast a spell right there, right there, that is at like the base of the ramp almost, like right there. If I rotate my camera, I would actually be casting my spell like right there. Does that make sense? Because again, we're not casting spells directly down. We're casting spells from like a 45 degree angle from the ground up. Because that's how the camera works in this game. You look at it from an angle. So you have to cast air spells, cast spells on air units from the dot. That's just how it's simply put. So this time warp literally missed like the majority of the corruptor. It hits maybe the back ones back here. That's about it. See how he's like not even in it? And your storms as well are missing every fucking time. You've cast three storms on his army so far. Yet, the majority of his army is still 200, 200, 170, 200. It's all green. That is not proper. His entire army should be yellow or orange right now. You are missing every storm. Which is why you're getting fucking destroyed right now. Like, you should be casting storms here, not here. Did you miss that one? I can see what I mean. Again, a whole fucking whiff. So I, I, this is something a lot of people struggle with, it, but it keeps happening and I know it's a re replay, so me saying it, it's not gonna change it. But I just want you to make sure that you know how to micro your units properly. Cast it on the circles, not on the units themselves. Cause you whiffed every fucking storm right there. And now look what happens as soon as these corruptors get AoE'd for a fucking, just for a second. One second of AoE on these corruptors cause an Archon hit them twice. And this Archon has literally zero weapon, up, we zero weapon upgrades. All the corruptors are just like, just dead. Two hits and they're all almost dead. That whiffed again. That's, he flew into it a little, a little bit of him, but that sort of whiffed again entirely at the, front, at the beginning of it. But you just took a fuckload of damage, and now I would say all it is is just rebuild the army. Try to expand in the process. Like, when you take a good fight, take another base, take some pylons, make some cannon battery at it, Allow yourself to transfer probes. Don't just all in. And then rebuild the army. Like right now, as soon as you kill the space, you should leave. You should like recall and get the fuck out of here right now. The fact that if you stay here until this army's dead, I would ask you why. <laughs> like why would you ever think in any world that this army's gonna win the game right now? Because you and this Zerg both ha have like six bases. And a Zerg player can just remax. 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 And if you stay here with four carrier, three Archon, you're gonna get fucking obliterated. You need to be getting out of here now. Are you making anything? You're making three carriers. 
so just know too, when you get to a point where you have, like, let's say you have a big bank like this. You're like, all my bases, I'm maxed out. All my bases have cannon battery. I, I, I can't make anything anymore. All my upgrades are done pretty, for the most part. Like, all your expenses are kind of gone. Ramp your gateway count up to, like, maybe 12 or, like, 14. And ramp your stargate count up to, like, 7 or so. Like, 6 or 7. Maybe even 8. If you have a lot of fucking money, you can go to, like, 8, gate, eight, eight stargates. That way, if you do end up losing a fight, you can remax way faster. But don't ever fucking stay there with a small army. That was super dumb. That was really bad for you. That's all that's gonna happen is you're gonna throw your army away. Then it resets you all entirely. But overall, I mean, you have the right idea. Fix up how you micro your army a little bit. You're, suddenly your fights will be way better. Also, never do this. I don't understand stalkers right now. You're freaking out. There's no reason to freak out. There's also no reason to stay there, right? If you would have just left after the fight was over and remaxed, you would have easily remaxed really fast. The fact that you're making Tempest, Dark Templar, Void Ray, St Stalker, Archon, I don't understand any of this. The Archons make a little bit of sense because you can have Corruptors. He has Corruptors now. Because he has Corruptors, so Ar Archons make sense now. But what the fuck are the uh, Stalkers are awful. Dark Templar? I don't understand Dark Templars at all right now. Uh, he's defensive, so if you go attack his base and he has mass spine spore, they're just gonna die. Uh, and voids are shit as well at this point. You don't want voids. Just literally, you can win the game just with Archon, Mothership, Carrier, Templar. That is, that is the best army you can make. Tempest don't accomplish anything here. Tempest are like one of the worst. Tempest and Stalker are fucking awful of what you're making. They're so supply, supply heavy. Ugh. They're so supply heavy too. They're bad. Don't ever make that again. Like this is, in this stage of the game, it's awful. Your army, your, your army is now, like, you're, like here's the thing. Let me just say this. Let me give you a number here, okay? This army says 200 supply, okay? Right? You're 199. We'll just say 200 to make it easy. 200. Against what you're up against, this army's value is worth like 150. Honestly. It's worth less than what it appears to be worth. It's worth garbage. It's worth so much less. It's like half as effective as it should be. It's like 50% worse than from the beginning of what it should be. Now, the army you had a second ago, the, the original army you had with the Mothership, Templar, Archon, uh, Carrier, uh... That army was worth like 50% more for what you were up against, which is a lot of air units from Zerg. That army had a lot of AoE, which which Zerg air gets fucking destroyed by AoE if you use it properly. And uh, it's it's stable, solid, carrier good. So this army is worth like 150. Your previous army was worth like, uh, like two, uh, two, 250. Someone says 250 goes to 150 equals 50%. So you just realize you have to account for the fact that you also have workers. If I said your army is 200 supply, but it's now worth only 100, you'd basically have no fucking army. Because that, that would mean you just have like workers pretty much then and like two carriers. That's it. Everyone has like around 80 workers or like 90 workers at this point of the game, usually. So keep that in mind. I'm, I'm referring your army, like your 200 supply, but your army is actually worth about 100. Your army has no answer to Corruptor. No, really. It's so bad against Corruptor. Yeah. So, if you just... If you just remade the first army repeatedly over and over and over and just use your storms properly, you would crush... The, the way this guy... Micros as well, you would easily fucking kill this guy. This guy never splits his corruptors. He clumps them, flies flies around, shoots a, a carrier, flies around, shoots a carrier, flies around, shoots a carrier. If you just A-move his corruptor pack to get your Archons to hit him, because you saw what happened right here. The second an Archon even touched, it just touched the corruptors. All the corruptors were like, 
characters just fucking dying super fast. Like, they were just getting up fucking de destroyed. So if you just focus fire your Archons in there, just one time, just to get the Archons to go over, the, over there. Be like, hey, Archons, go kill the, inter the fucking Corruptors. That's it. You're done. They just let them A-move after that. Once they're, like, actually engaging the Corruptor. And then throwing storms at the circles. Three storms. And all of his Corruptors are, like, almost dead. Guaranteed. Because the storm does... It, a storm ignores armor. And it does about 80 damage over three seconds. So that equates to about... What is that? That's, like, 28 damage a second or something. Or, like, 27 damage a second. And each time you storm the corruptors, realistically they're gonna hit they're gonna get hit by about one to two seconds of it. It's not like they're gonna get out within before even second even starts, because you can't there's the corruptors don't move that fast. It's very realistic for corruptors to eat two seconds of storm damage every time it gets cast. So that's about uh, fifty four damage every time you cast the storm. If you cast it directly in the center of the corruptors. And you know what fifty four damage is? It's one about one fourth of the health of a corruptor. Roughly. So, three storms, and all these corruptors would be fucking red. The way he micros. Because the way this guy micros is everything is clumped. Everything is clumped. Everything is clumped. Everything is clumped. Storm, storm, storm. His shit's all red. One more storm, suddenly it's all dead. Or your Archons smack it once, it dies. Or carriers are just chop suing the fucking corruptors super fast at that point. So, just keep making that army. There's nothing wrong with the army. There was everything wrong with how you microed it. Just fix that. Stop casting on the Corruptor graphic itself and start casting on the circle below, below and suddenly your armies are going to feel way stronger because you're not even hitting the... It's basically like you're just throwing fucking whiffs repeatedly. So it's like you don't even have those those units at all. It's like, oh, I'm throwing storms. You might as well be storming over here, essentially. Right now. That's how that's how effective your storms are. It looks like... Like, if you cast a storm right there, for instance, it would hit nothing. If I cast a storm right here, it would hit the top Corruptors. Like, the top four Corruptors we could hit right now. If I cast a storm right here, I would hit fucking everything. So you spread Corruptor. Guys, I'm going to tell you right now, nobody in fucking Diamond League is going to micro like that. If you're Diamond League, disregard microing Corruptors properly. Micro like this guy, you can't handle microing properly. I guarantee you'll fuck it up. But yes, you're supposed to spread your Corruptors out against AoE, and you're supposed to avoid getting hit by Archons. <laughs> it is extremely hard to do that. It's not easy. So no one in Diamond is going to do that properly. Up, please. It, You're ruining the video, SMH my head. Thanks, Servium. Uh, even Zergs and like GM struggle to micro prepper against Skytoss. It's not easy to micro against Skytoss, no matter what league you're in. It's fucking hard. So Diamond is not going to suddenly play better than like a pro, a pro gamer or like a top GM player at micro. It's it's no matter what, it's hard for Zerg. This composition's a bitch to deal with. Uh. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, anyways. Much love, guys. Thank you for... Uh, thank you very much for... That's pretty much it. That's If you fix those things, it'll help you a, lo a lot. Better setup. Better... You know... The setup is huge. Better control of your army. Games will feel easy as fuck. You had every means to win this game multiple times, but you threw it. And your setup wasn't punished either. <laughs> but uh, yeah. You could definitely fix, this, fix that uh, for the ways we talked about earlier. Like, proper build order. to Like, proper I idea of efficiency in your build. Anyways, guys, sorry about the hiccups. Uh, thank you guys for watching the video, though. If you made it here and you're not, like, dry, you haven't been gone crazy yet from the hiccups, well done. I'm surprised I haven't gone crazy either trying to fucking explain this shit while hiccuping constantly. It's pretty hard. Uh, but thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed it, go check out more videos. I promise this is probably one of the only ones with hiccups.